This is an example of a DC node solutions problem at level 4 in Circuit Tutor. So let's go into that exercise. And of course, as always, there are fully worked examples that you can look at. So let's do a mastery level or level 4 exercise. So the first task, as always, is to pick a suitable reference node. Remember that we want this to be attached to as many different items uh, or as many different circuit elements as possible, um, including where possible uh, as many voltage sources as possible. So here we see that this node is connected to four elements. This one has three, this one has four, three, um, and two. But this one is connected to a voltage source, unlike this one. So we'll pick this as our best choice of reference node. Okay, so there are the instructions. If you need those, um, you can review those. And remember that in the Node Solutions tutorials, the KCL equations are being given to us, and we need to write only the voltage constraint equations. Since we do have two voltage sources here, we'll need two such equations. Um, we also need to write the equations for control variables of the dependent sources. Since we have one dependent source here, we will need one such equation. And finally, we need to write an equation for each SOT variable. In this case, we have one SOT current. So let's write those equations. We'll start with the voltage constraint equations. So let's do that for the 4 volt source first, since that's tied to ground. That will be a simple equation um, where we just have one voltage. So that simply says that V1 will be equal to uh, 4 volts. And then for the 8 volt source, we're going to have a difference of voltages since neither end, neither end is tied to ground. So that will give us V4 minus V2 is equal to 8 volts. And next we need to do the uh, SOT, or rather the control variable, for the dependent source. So we will write a control variable equation. And our control variable here, since the source has an output value of 2ix, its control variable will be ix, which is the current through this 8 ohm resistor here. So we select, that'll be for ix equals 2, and then we're going to need um, a single node voltage divided by a resistance. So that'll be this type of term, which has the correct units, of course, of volts over ohms, which will give us amps. And we fill in the x there, and then that's going to be v2 divided by 8 ohms, check that and that is correct and finally we need to do the SOT variable which is the uh, I naught which is the voltage through a current source now that's one of the trickier things to do in general because we need to know um, the uh, current through a voltage source is whatever it needs to be And therefore, we're going to have to, uh, we can't find that directly. We're going to have to use the current through other elements to determine that. So we could either look at this end of that voltage source, or we could look at this end. And in this case, we're going to have three different currents involved. In this case, we have only two. So this will be the simpler case. Um, Circuit Tutor will accept either result. But in this case, I'm going to do it this way. So we'll pick SOT uh, branch current here and say I naught equals 2 and we have a current through a resistor which will be this term and then we have a current controlled current source so that'll be this type of term so we're going to have uh, basically we want to add the currents going in the direction of I naught so that would be the direction here through this 5 ohm resistor so that's going to be V1 minus V3 divided by 5 ohms and since this current is going opposite to the direction of I naught, we have to have a minus sign there, minus, and then that will be 2 times Ix. And that is the correct SOT variable equation um, for the current through this voltage source. Now again, we could have written an equation that said uh, V3 over 2 ohms plus V4 over 5 ohms plus V2 over 8 ohms. That would have also worked and wouldn't have been much different than this in terms of complexity, but uh, we just chose to do it this way. 
So now we've written all the required equations. So we'll click no more equations here. And now we need to uh, simplify these equations and put them into standard form, all except for the SOT variable equation, which we will be using only later. Uh, but each of these equations, the voltage constraint, KCL, and control variable equations need to be written in standard form. And we're going to do that on the following form. So we'll start with the voltage constraint equations. So we have V1 is equal to 4, so V1 has a coefficient of 1. And then we just put the constant of 4 on the right-hand side. All the other terms will be 0. Then for the next one, V4 minus V2. So that'll give us V4 with a coefficient of 1 and V2 with a coefficient of minus 1. And then the right-hand side will be 2. I'm sorry, 8, rather. And then for the next KCL equation, um, there's no V1 term, so that'll be 0. Um, the V2 term is 1 8th, so that'll be 0.125. And then for the V3 term, we have minus 1 6th, which will therefore be minus 0 0.1667 to four digits, just to have sufficient accuracy. And then for um, the V4 term, we see we're going to have uh, 1 5th, which is 0.2, plus 1 6th, which is 0.1667. And so we can add that up probably in our head just to write 0.3667. And there is no IX term here, so that'll be 0. And then the right-hand side is 0. So the next KCL equation um, for V1, we have minus 1 5th, or negative 0.2. For V2, there is no V2 term, so that'll be 0. For V3, V3 we have um, a half, or 0.5, plus a fifth, which is 0.2, so that'll be 0.7. And then, in addition, we have 1 sixth, which is 0.1667, so that will give us 0. Um, 0.8667. And then for V4 here, we have just a minus 1 sixth. So that will be negative 0 0.1667. And then for Ix, we have a coefficient of 2 in this equation. So that'll be 2. And in this case, the right-hand side happens to be 0. And then finally, we have to do the control variable for the dependent source. So that's going to be Ix. So that has a coefficient of 1. And then bringing everything over to the left-hand side, that will be minus 1 8th V2. So that would be negative 0 0.125 V2. And now we'll check those equations. And we got them correct. So those are now printed on the screen here. And now we have to enter those in the form of a matrix equation even though, as I'll show you, this probably won't be uh, a very good problem to solve using matrix methods. But nonetheless, just for uh, straightforwardness, we'll put this into a matrix equation also. And we don't need to retype all of that. We can just click the button that says copy the coefficients from the simplified equations um, and then check that. And now we have the matrix equation printed on the screen. Um, and now uh, we need to solve this. Now, of course, one could use something like MATLAB, or you could uh, put this into a calculator to solve it, um, which is one of the reasons that we show you how to put it into matrix form. But really, if you're going to do this by hand, as we would likely be required to do on a test, for example, um, we really would be best to use elementary algebra. We really only have two complicated equations here, namely these KCL equations. The voltage constraint equations and the so, uh, sorry, the control variable equation, those are basically very simple equations that we can easily substitute into these other two, and that'll give us just a two by two system of equations, which is easy to solve by elementary methods. And that's always the uh, approach I would recommend, is to take these simple equations and substitute them into the more complicated ones. That will greatly reduce the number of equations as opposed to doing a full-fledged Gauss elimination um, on this thing, which would be a bit painful to do by hand. And that's what the instructions there were advising us to do. And your instructor may want to see your handwritten solution of this. Um, if they so instruct you, then you would want to keep that. And it's always a good idea to have that written out neatly just to document your work. Okay, so we need to compute this now. 
And so we're going to do the algebra here on paper. So scroll over here and uh, look at these equations. So what I've done is simply to copy over the KCL equations, which are, remember, the third and the fourth one here, so these more complicated ones here. And I've just basically rewritten those here, the 0.125v2 minus 0.1667v3 plus 0.3667v4. Um, that's equal to zero. I've just left out the zero terms since I don't need those. And then the second equation is uh, minus 0.2v1 plus 0.8667v3 minus uh, 0.1667v4 plus 2ix equal to zero. So again, that's this fourth equation here. And then I've written the other simple equations below it. So v1, remember, is equal to 4. v4 minus v2 is equal to 8. And therefore, I can solve that. Uh, let's eliminate um, the v4 variable here by substituting in terms of v2. So we'll just solve this for v4 in terms of v2. And then the ix, remember, is just the v2 over 8. I'm eliminating all the units here um, since they're all uh, just volts and amps. And uh, we, you would not want to, however, eliminate any milliamps or, or any metric prefix in general, however. Um, those would need to be kept in these equations. But the units themselves I'm eliminating since I know they're going to work out properly. OK, since ix is in terms of v2, it does make sense here to solve this for v4 in terms of v2 because I want to minimize the number of variables I have so I can get to a 2 by 2. So now I'm just going to take, for example, this equation and put it down here. But I'm going to substitute now for um, the v1 and the v4 and the ix. Uh, ix doesn't appear there, so it'll just be 0.125v2 minus 0.1667v3 plus 0.3667 um, and now I'm going to replace v4 by v2 plus 8. So that gives me a, a v2 term here, and then the 0.3667 times 8 here um, from substituting this in for v4. And then the rest of that is just equal to 0. And now I will simplify that by collecting terms here, because I now have two different v2 terms. So I'll just add their coefficients, the 0.125 and the 0.3667. And that will give me, uh, using a calculator, that's 0.4917v2 the v3 term just carries down. And then the constants I'm going to move, which is just this term, I multiply that out and subtract it from both sides to put it on the right-hand side. And when I do that, again, on a calculator, that will give me uh, negative 2.9336. And again, I'm trying to keep um, at least four significant digits here um, to ensure that I don't have round-off error that would perhaps uh, make it too inaccurate uh, to be accepted by circuit tutor for the final result. OK, so that's one of my uh, first simplified equations. Then I'm going to take the second equation and do the same type of thing. So uh, now I have the minus uh, 0 0.2, and I put in my value of v1. That's 4. And then I have the 0.667v3, so I just copy that down. And then minus 0.1667 times v4, but again, substituting v4 equals v2 plus 8. So that would give me the minus 0.1667v2, and then point, minus 0.1667 times 8. And then finally, plus 2ix. And again, I substitute ix here from the control variable equation. So that will just give me 2 eighths of v2, or in other words, 1 fourth, just canceling that, of v2. And now, again, I want to collect terms here um, to make this simpler. And so for the v2, I have the minus 0.1667. And then I have the plus 0.25. And so adding those two numbers uh, together in a calculator, that will give me, or perhaps you could do that in your head, is 0.0833v2. Um, notice that we did have significant cancellation there, so that's one of these things where you could get into round off error, and you have to be careful when you're subtracting two ne nearly equal numbers that you have enough digits in the original numbers that you'll still have sufficient accuracy in this coefficient. Um, then the v3, that term just carries down since there's only one such term. And then I will bring um, the two constants here, the minus uh, uh, 0 0.8 here, and the minus, uh, well, this product here. Uh, add those both to the right-hand side. And when I do that on a calculator, that will give me 2.1336. So that gives me the second equation in addition to this first equation. And now, you see, we just have a simple 2 by 2 system of equations, which is easy to solve by any elementary algebraic method. And the circuit tutor problems are generally designed so you would have at most a 2x2 two two or maybe sometimes a 3x3 three three problem. Um, in most cases, they're probably going to be 2x2, two two, which is very easy to solve by elementary methods. 
So um, we could do various things. We could solve this equation for V2 and plug that into here to find V3, or do the opposite, solve for this for V3 and put it into here, solve for V2, or various combinations. What I'm going to do is simply multiply this equation by this coefficient divided by this one, and using a negative here so that I can then add the resulting equations. And by doing that, obviously, this will become negative 0.4917 when this cancels out with this. Um, and then I can add that to this to get 0 and eliminate the v2 term, which is, of course, the goal is to eliminate one of the variables. And so that, if we multiply that out, that's, uh, or divide that rather, that's negative 5.90. So I just multiply negative 5.90 times 0.8667, add that to the minus 0.1667, and that gives me the coefficient of V3 down here will turn out to be, uh, using a calculator there, negative 5.283 V3. And then I multiply again here times the constant term up here, and then add that result to the negative 0.29336 here. And that will give me, to four digits, negative 15.52. And then, of course, I just divide both sides here by the minus point. Uh, minus 5.283 to get V3 is equal to 2.938 volts. So that's my result for V3. And then I can use either of these uh, simplified equations, this one or this one, to get the uh, V2, which we also need. And so um, I'll just use this equation, for example, and write 0.4917 V2 is equal to 0.1667 times V3, putting in the value of V3 down here. Um, and then minus the uh, constant, which is the 2.9336. Then just evaluating this expression on a calculator, that works out to negative 2.444. And then just divide, of course, both sides by 0.4917 to solve for V2. Um, and that will give me V2 is equal to negative 4.97 volts. Um, and then to find V4, remember that was just equal to V2 plus 8. So using that, um, I just add this to 8, and that will give me 3.03, .03, and that's um, the rest of the digits there I didn't show are zeros. So that gives me all the required values, V1 here, uh, V2, uh, V3, and V4. So now I'll simply enter those onto the requested form. Now remember that you don't necessarily have to do that. If you don't want to, you can always skip this and go straight to answering the question for the final SOT variable. So that's one way of doing it. But I'm going to enter the original values just to make sure they're all correct, and that will make it easier for me to find any mistakes. And if necessary, you can always go back and do that. So let's put in the V1 here is 4, and the V2 um, is negative 4.97, and then V3 um, is 2.938, and then V4 is going to be 3.03. And some of these numbers are probably off a little bit, but um, they should be within the error tolerance. Um, so we'll check that. And indeed, that did work. And now it's telling me that the next step is to evaluate the SOT quantity using the SOT variable equation. So now we'll do that. And of course, we have this equation to evaluate. So I0 is V1 minus V3 over 5 ohms minus 2 Ix. So we just use the values um, that have been printed for us down here. So we get out our calculator and take 4 minus the V3, which is the 2.939, divide that uh, difference by 5, and subtract twice the Ix, which is this value here, um, which will actually be then adding something. And uh, when we do that on our calculator, we're going to get uh, approximately 1.455. Uh, might be slightly different uh, since my values won't weren't perfectly accurate, but it'll be close to that value. And now we're basically finished. Um, we have all the required values. Um, it's generating a transcript, and um, we're finished at this point.